Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you're keeping okay. Uh, this is the first morning I think I've been doing these devotionals um, when I've looked outside the window and it's been uh, raining. Um, I don't know what significance that has, but it just uh, it seems strange to me that in our country in particular, uh, after all this time, this should be the first morning it rains. Um, we're reading the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we're going through each phrase of the Lord's Prayer and I want to read uh, it again to you, this time from the New Living Translation of the Bible. It says this. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation but rescue us from the evil one. Thinking this morning about the line, uh, your will be done. And I have to be honest um, and say I approach this one uh, at the moment, particularly with more um, trepidation perhaps than any other phrase in the Lord's Prayer, because whenever we pray, your will be done. I don't know about you, I don't know what, what it feels like to you, but so often... It seems like it's a prayer of resignation. Well, Lord, I didn't really want this, but your will be done. Um, or it's a prayer of, of resentment. Actually, we feel we feel that we don't understand what's going on. We feel angry, we feel annoyed. And we're saying, well, God's will be done. And uh, there's, there's something in that, I think there's something in that that makes us think, well, what is... What is God's will in this whole situation that we're going through right now? Are we just to, to, to throw up our hands in resignation and say, well, coronavirus, pandemic, 26,000 deaths in the UK alone. Is that God's will? Is it God's will that this happen? I don't think that coronavirus is God's will, so to speak, any more than cancer or dementia, or any other form of illness or suffering uh, is God's will. But the reality is that how we approach situations of suffering, how we approach crises, how we approach difficulties, can allow God's will to be done in us and in our lives. And so rather than asking the question, well, is coronavirus God's will? Maybe the question we should ask is, what is God's will for me in this time, in this pandemic? I think there are things that are happening in this, that, or through this, uh, that could be God's will for us. Our reliance on ourselves and our illusion that we're in control of things, well, that's gone. That's gone. Um, and so we need to turn to somewhere else and someone else uh, to depend on. Uh, our idols that we kind of set up, uh, whether it's the economy or uh, our workplace or our physical health or whatever it might be, well, those are exposed for the false things that they are. Uh, and again, we, they're demonstrated that we can't trust them. And the other thing that this pandemic can do in us is increase our longing for that time when disease and death and uh, wickedness and evil and all of those things are no longer with us. It should increase our longing for home, the place that we will call home one day, the place for which we were made. And so if it is God's will to use this time to do all of those things in us, then that's a good thing. Coronavirus is not a good thing, but God can bring good things out of this. We know he can bring good things out of this because he brought the best thing possible, the, the most amazing thing possible out of the darkest day in history, out of the cross. It was God's will that Jesus suffer and die.
because ultimately it was his will that through Jesus' death we know uh, and love him and put our trust in him. It was his will that through Jesus' death we would have his life, God's own life, in us, making us holy and setting us apart, giving us his Holy Spirit to live within us. It was his will that through Jesus' death on the cross, through that darkest day, we should have eternal life. Jesus speaks about it uh, in John chapter 6, uh, and he says this, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. This is God's will, that we have eternal life, that we have a home to look forward to, that we are raised up with Christ on the last day. And so when we pray, your will be done, we don't have to pray it with resignation. We can pray it with expectancy. We can pray it with anticipation. We can pray it looking forward to that day when his will is done in us. And we can pray that his will, that will be done in those we know and love as well. There's a prayer uh, that uh, is used within uh, the Methodist Church in their covenant service. Uh, and some of you will be familiar with it. Uh, and it talks about God's will being done in our lives. I want to read it to you. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Uh, and hopefully speak to you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.